just walking through my food forest right now, which is going off. And I think one of the reasons it's going off is because we put these urban swales in. In this video, I'm gonna talk about how to construct them, why they're awesome, and some of the observations that we've noticed working with them over the last seven years. Let's get into it. on this project now for about five years and when we first put this swale in we originally filled it up with mulch and we actually had really great results. Um, we then wanted to experiment by taking the mulch out and putting gravel in which was a lot of work and it ended up not being a great medium to convey water and so today we've we've just gone through the process of extracting all of that gravel. The gravel got used elsewhere on the property and we've filled the swale back with mulch but this time with a weeping tile so that water can convey quickly from one side of the swale to the other. So this top garden right here receives water from the roof that I'm standing in front of right now which captures roughly 20,000 liters of water per year. The water is conveyed down the downspout right here right beside the solar collector and it conveys itself into a tire pond which sits right here and you can see we've got wetland plants growing out of here so we've got some, some reeds, some sedges. These plants clean the water coming off of the roof. There's no first flush diverter or, or rain head on this. It just goes straight into that pond. The pond overflows into the swale itself and the swale will hydrate these garden beds passively with very, uh, small amount, a very small amount of evaporation. Now, what we've noticed in our other swales is that this medium, this mulch medium, with uh, the weeping tile and all the additional moisture is fantastic worm habitat. It becomes one of the most biodiverse ecosystems on our, on our property and the worms actually shuttle the mulch and the carbon in between the garden beds and back out. So over time this will decompose and will start to shrink and we'll just come back and add more mulch in time and build the pathway back up. But because we have that weeping tile in there it allows the water to continue to convey. Inevitably, throughout the season, this swale will fill up with water and overflow. And uh, whenever you design any kind of water harvesting feature, you have to make sure you have an overflow point so that you don't inundate the system. So this is our spillway. This concrete wall will flow over multiple times uh, per year. We've created a catch basin underneath, which then conveys the water into another swale around this bottom garden here. So the bottom garden receives any overflow from the top swale. Plus, it also receives water from our in-ground rain cistern, it overflows into there, and it also receives water from the downspout coming from the garage right here, uh, down in this lower swale here. So in between the garage, the house, and the greenhouse, this site collects roughly 60 or 70,000 liters per year. This is the weeping tile moving through this swale on the bottom side, and it's receiving all the water from the east side of the garage. Again, hydrating the, the beds from the bottom up. So essentially what we've done here, if you had to kind of break it down, is we've created a hugel culture mixed in with a wicking bed, mixed in with a swale system. And when you bring all of them together, what you get is this amazing garden that grows by itself without, with very little irrigation. Occasionally we have to add a little bit of water on really hot days. But generally speaking, this garden does not get any additional water throughout the course of the year other than what falls on it, plus what we direct to it from our roofs. If you found that video useful, check out our website at vergepermaculture.ca. I've written extensively on water harvesting and permaculture. Subscribe to our channel and check out the links below. See you next time.